the word prosperity is a major mm. block in the body of Christ where the moment anyone touches starts to wander in the realm of positive thinking, positive attitudes, gratitude, ways of being and, and, and abundance and prosperity, you, you're then someone like you, I, I'm pretty sure you get this, you're immediately thrown into prosperity teaching, prosperity gospel, uh, uh, you're thrown, you're lumped into that category of, you know, tithe here and all these blessings are going to occur, you know, and all this, all this weird stuff. And I'm pretty sure without a doubt, there is in the body of Christ, in the church community, there are those preachers that do that for sure, because they're trying to feed them their own selves by manipulating scripture. But what Probably. about what? But what about the actual word itself, as it relates to yeah. prosperity? The kingdom citizen here on planet Earth, although everyone may not experience mul becoming a multimillionaire, multi-billionaire, or even trillionaire, so many years mm -hmm. from now, right? We're gonna. We're, I think we're gonna experience our first trillionaire soon in the next couple of years. Can can we now break this other belief system of the prosperity, the idea of prosperity, and how Christians really wrestle with that? Because even when we get it, and this is something I experienced, when I started winning at such a young age, very early on, and money started coming in very fast, all of a sudden, this, this guilt uh, mm -hmm. started to creep in like, wait a minute, I'm a child of God and I'm, and I'm, and I'm of the faith and, and should I really have all this money? You know, I don't really need it. Uh, I know how to live off 30, 40, 50 grand a year. And now I'm bringing in two, three, 400 grand on average. And it's coming like nothing. And it's so easy. And I have all this money left over. Should I just like, just, just, just depart from it, give it away. I don't want it to make me evil. So yeah. I had to wrestle with that for a couple of years. And that was during COVID. COVID, I had my biggest year. And I was like, I literally stopped taking clients for a period of time because I had to work my thinking here because I knew it was getting, there was, it was, there was an attack occurring and it didn't come from non-believers. It didn't come from uh, any one of my clients that were cheering me on like, oh my God, you're doing amazing. This is awesome. It came from going to church, hearing certain stuff and, and sharing what, what, what I was feeling. And then it was almost like I was doing something wrong, you know? Right. Uh, so that's the next block here as we go yeah. through this system here that I would like to release if you have something to say on there. If I have something to say, how much time you get? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Open okay. Up. So let's, let's look at it for what it is. The Bible has a scripture that talks about a house divided against itself can't stand. This is how the enemy will operate. He wants to create division. So if he can get other Christians telling you what's happening is bad and that maybe you should feel guilty. Well, He's thrilled because he doesn't have to do a lot of work. He just gets a house divided against itself. Mm -hmm. And so he can get that division created through silly things like this. Here's what, here's the, 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 the simple solution to all of this is would you just go read the Bible for yourself and get the understanding yourself? So what happens is we'll hear a preacher, we'll hear somebody, because like I say this in my stuff all the time. I'm like, don't take my word for it. Go read it for yourself. Here's my notes. Go check it out. It's these scriptures. I'm always trying to get people to go get it for themselves because when you understand it for yourself, those guilt thoughts and those, those things are actually counterfeits. They're actually false. They're actually not aligned with the truth. But if you know the truth, one, you'll be set free, but then also you can recognize the counterfeit pretty easily when it comes. One of the, one of the names that the devil is given is the accuser of the brethren. So this is a good clue right here. Whenever you're feeling guilty around money or having too much of it, you're going to hear those things like you're being selfish. Yeah. You're being greedy right now. You don't need that much. Who do you think you are? Don't you remember where you came from? Well, what's happening? That voice is accusing you. Those are accusatory thoughts. So you can stop right there and be like, oh, that's not from God. He doesn't do that. That's the nature of the enemy. Okay. Oh, okay. He's accusing me of of greed and guilt doesn't come from God. Those aren't his characteristics. Those aren't his nature. That's not his parenting style. The way that this stuff comes from God, he does correct us, but he corrects us through his word. So you can read a scripture and you could say, oh, here's where I'm off. It says right here, I need to make this adjustment. It is not through God accusing you, condemning you, or trying to make you feel guilty. That's the enemy's voice, but we give God the credit. And that's what confuses most Christians. 
That's what hangs up most Christians. They start moving towards success. The enemy puts a rock in their shoe and they think it's God. And that's, well, I'm just going to short circuit then. If I think having a lot of money, here's something you mentioned, will make me evil. Well, then I'm not going to have a lot of money. You're going to self-sabotage. And I think when you say money blocks, this is usually what's happening is a Christian who's, who loves God, but they think that money is going to turn them into something that they're not. So I'm not going to go down that path because I'm a morally good person. So let me self-sabotage. Man, they'll start making less sales calls. They'll stop trying as hard. They'll have all these excuses and reasoning. They'll stop working as much. They'll pull back. They'll do all kinds of stuff, not realizing that's actually what they're doing is they're self-sabotaging their own success because they're actually afraid that if I get there, man, God could get mad at me mm. or I could become greedy. One of those guys. And we fear criticism. There's a, there's a, there's a book called outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill that I like. And it, the devil outlines his major six major fears that he uses to control people. And one of the main ones is the fear of criticism. Man, if I do that, what will people think? Man, in, in the world, if I make a lot of money and brag about it, it's awesome. In some church worlds, you make a lot of money you're looked at weird. Yeah. And it starts, well, what, what shady thing did you do to make that money? What sketchy thing did you do? And I'll, a, um, this is kind of just a fun, it's not actually, it's not fun, but a side note is, uh, I read an article, it was in Forbes, I believe. And it talked about how since the 1960s, almost every single bad guy in a movie, action, even rom-com, it doesn't really matter, cartoons, almost every single bad guy is a, evil, wealthy, greedy, and selfish person. Yeah. And so subconsciously, we've been spending the last 25 years of our lives more and more watching these movies and shows, subconsciously being implanted the seed that, hey, if you get money, you'll be like that guy. You'll step on people's backs. You won't have a family. You'll ruin all your relationships. You'll right. be greedy and immoral. You'll be a, and this. You'll be a sociopath. Yeah you know all these different things and it's like okay oh, yeah. now you're living in a world that's producing the wrong heroes right so our hero making machine is really bad right yeah. we're, we're, we're uh we're praising complainers rather than doers right uh so well, there's that exactly. as well back to the book abraham god made him extremely wealthy yeah. in silver gold cattle livestock he was so wealthy that the king was like, please move. You're bigger than me. <laughs> His son, Isaac, same thing. And when you, when, you, when you read this out in Genesis, it's kind of what we talked about. They went to God, got their strategy. God prospered them. Simple. That's it.